Sino mag-lecture ngayon, Herwin? Si... Dalawa kay ate Silvia. Si Kia at saka. Tama ba si Gorgelius? Sir? Hindi. Para hindi ata. Kasi hindi niya maiwanan yung ano eh. Sa business niya. palalahat ngayon, sir. Ha? Si Ate Silvia, silang apat. Ha? Uh, Pinky, si Bel, si, si Bea. Isang section sila? Dalawa kay Ate Silvia. Hmm. Ano yung chapter 2? 3. Chapter 3. So sa UP Tay bukas ng gabi, um, model lecture na lang muna tapos saka yung presentation ng mga ano, presentation nila. Presentation na chapter 1. Tapos sa Saturday, chapter 1 section 1. Mm -hmm. Sa Saturday, mauna muna yung presentation nila tapos saka yung model lecture. Para ano, i-divide mo na lang yung time. Nagawa ba ng group chat sir sa special ano, lecture? Mas maganda para ano. Doon din yung mga ano, IPTA. Hmm. Pero parang okay na yung UPTA eh. O UPTA lectures. Doon na lang din lahat. Para ano. So si Ate Irene lang. Sa group chat. Doon sa, I mean sa ano, special lecture. Gagawa hmm. ng group. Kasi siya lang naman din yung, di ba, mag-lecture. Mag O kung merong gusto mag-support doon, di pwedeng iano siya. Pwedeng isama.
Handa si Ate Silvio. Good evening po, Uya. Hello, Hello Ate. Good evening. I love you, the handa-handa. <laughs> Joker. Hindi po yan. Hindi handa. Ano ang dinaka din sa amo ko eh. Para ko mm. Maulan ba dyan, Te? Maulan right now.
Good evening, everybody. Uh, let us sing now. Let us sing the Nargo Kantem. Parents, as we will be having an online daily lecture series tonight, we would like to um, um, first express our love and gratitude to you. Thank you very much, Heavenly Parent, for giving us this opportunity to gather together with our brothers and sisters. And we're very grateful as well that all of us were able to come here, Heavenly Parents. Now that we are about to begin, Heavenly Parents, we would like to sincerely pray that you would be with us. Um, together with our brothers and sisters for the lecturers as well that may you really um, help them and use them as your instrument to deliver your words to our precious brothers and sisters heavenly thank you very much once again heavenly parents for this opportunity that you have given us and may we be able to have a fruitful night today heavenly parents thank you very much once again and this i like to sincerely ask and pray on behalf of my brothers and sisters my name is Mbogia Farah, daughter of Sophia Limitia Farah, and of family, Aju. Aju. Okay. Um, 
Welcome, brothers and sisters. Uh, please open your camera. <laughs> okay, so we are on our meeting number. Third one. Fifth. Sixth na meeting of our And okay, and so we have uh, another chapter for tonight, chapter three, Pathology and Human History. This will be lectured by our uh, UPTA lecturers. Marami sila, sila lahat. All the sections, section one, uh, two, three, four, and five. So each one of them will give lecture. So I hope you are ready. But before that, so since uh, last time we are talking about, uh, we are done with the human fall, right? Uh, chapter two, human fall. So chapter one, principle of creation, the original plan of God, the blueprint of God. And chapter two, human fall, and how the principle of God was an, uh, upside down. And then chapter three, so we will know what is this chapter three, what is this eschatology, and what are what is the um, the essence of human history, so in line with the providence uh, of God. So let us begin with our first lecture. So we natin papatagalin pa because marami sila. <laughs> Takes so much time. So our first. Lecture for the uh, chapter three introduction to the section one. Uh, let us all welcome uh, section one. The completion of God's purpose of creation and the human form. Right. So, without further ado, let us all welcome Happy Serbia. Yeah, better. Let's give a round of applause. Hello, her captain. Nice. Okay. Sandali lang yun ha, kasi change mo na kami ng ano ni Bell. Okay lang, tayo. Sige lang. Take your time. Thank you. Lata si Bell. Okay. 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 Lang yan. Oh my goodness. So, yeah, good evening, everyone. Um, I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, this evening, I am tasked to, just mentioned by our queer heroine, I will be discussing eschatology and ministry. So, yeah, this section is actually divided into five. Uh, this this chapter is actually divided into five sections, and then yeah, I will be doing the introduction and the first section, and then the rest of the other um, for other sections will be discussed by different person. Ah, ako pala sa number five. So yeah, brothers and sisters, we knew exactly what was God's original plan, His purpose, and then in chapter one, and then. Yeah, just like we Aaron said, chapter two has actually um, discussed how had this original plan of God uh, came into a disappointment of his. And 
We only learn that because of this new truth that we are studying the divine worship. Now we are now in the chapter three as part of this full new truth. So this new truth had actually taught us about yeah God's heart of joy when He created all of His um, creation and uh, expressing His dual characteristics. Wait a minute. Expressing his dual characteristics, um, projecting it through all his creation, especially to human beings as the center of his creation. So here we can also see um, because God is an absolute God, and therefore he has an eternal purpose of creation that has to be accomplished through the three great blessings. No? So, but this can only be realized if we human beings has to exercise or really fulfill our personal responsibility. And that is what is being stated. In the, however, in the preceding, preceding chapter, I mean, after that one, the, the next chapter has the, 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 the fall of man. Also, have, we also have learned that uh, what was really the original, uh, the root cause of sin, which all of us, mankind, had been confronted with even up to the present moment. And thus, this has, because of that, our relationship to God has been severed. And we become actually disconnected to, uh, to our creator as our parents. And um, not only that, it also had actually brought all things into a very chaotic or unprincipled um, order, having man as the center of this creation and the whole universe. So one important point that I think we should take note to that is, that I can remember is, as God has given the word not to eat, is we have to reflect on those uh, events that had happened in the Garden of Eden is the importance of reporting that I think um, we should be able to actually also practice in our daily life of faith now. So it is for me, it is very necessary because without it, we might be, without us practicing it, we might be become the same people just like our first human ancestors who would um, may cause a lot of sorrow to the heart of our heavenly parents, our creator. Thus, uh, this also had brought terrible uh, no, outcome, actually, that that uh, no, not having able to, to, uh, to report properly. Uh, because of that, uh, it has brought terrible, uh, no, uh, what's this, outcome, which I think at the present moment we can, we can actually observe. Do you know? Do you know? Uh, do you think so, brothers and sisters? So yeah, and because of that fall of man, we human beings actually dwell in ignorance. Actually, not just ignorance, total ignorance of history. Where does we come from, and where did we really originate? We are very unaware, or have no how, actually, total know how, and uh, we also don't know where are we really going. What direction are we taking? And uh, where are we exactly will be heading to also. So, um, how to do it? Huh? Okay, so, um, however, um concerning on this last days because we know that oh i didn't say eschatology pula is the last days it's it does come from the word eschatos a greek word eschatos which means the last days and then logy of course is the study so yeah concerning on this um last days uh actually many christians had why do we have to study last days well, um, because of this new truth, actually, we can then understand that uh, we are now in the last days. Why is that? 
um, because if based on the uh, Bible, many Christians had actually believed that um, the last days uh, is, I mean, it has been very known to all of us that it's, we are now in the last days. And then uh, there are so many passages actually that uh, had been stated in the, in the, what's this? In the Bible. And uh, it has been stating and representing some symbolic and meanings, just like um, in the minute. Money. Anyway, uh, I think I uh, I lost my I lost my notes. But however, in this um, because we were talking about the the last days now, in this um, Bible verses, uh, we owe to uh, I think we don't know exactly if um, yeah here. Concerning on the last days pala, on the doctrine of the last days, many Christians believe literally what is written in the Bible. So just like in uh, 2 Peter 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 12, it says that the heavens will be kindled and dissolved and the elements will be melt with fire. So, and then in, in Matthew verse 27, cha uh, chapter 27, verse 52 to 53, it says the graves will were opened and many bodies were raised. And like manner in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 to 17, it says there that the dead in the Christ will rise to meet the Lord in the air. However, um, all these passages ought to be understood uh, do we have to really understand this as a stated? I think we have been, you uh, know, um, in the preceding chapter, actually we had been learning that there were lots of um, words in the Bible that has, that has been only symbolically or metaphor metaphorically been presented. So we have learned, just for example, in the fall of man, that there are numerous, um, these numerous verses were, but symbolic, right? So one example of this is the tree of life that has been the hope of Eve. Uh, what was that on that time? Uh, what was it referring to? Uh, I think we learned that it was actually the perfected Adam. So if we were to, if here we can clearly understand that the, this um, Bible verses could be referring to something that that cannot be understood through our own querying mind or be interpreted by our own mind. So to reiterate, we need to this new truth, this um, divine principle, for us to be able to understand all this. So one important question for Christians. Uh, to consider is whether or whether these events will take place literally or symbolically, as in many parts of the Bible has been uh, said. So, so we know that God has been actually. Um, Actually, abiding in our mind, no? Wait a minute, We actually know that God has been abiding in our mind fully if we become mature. Should had been man at reach perfection. 
but we learned that in the first uh, chapter. So we have also learned that perfected man in, in character become the temple of God, right? Leading us to become in total harmony with him. Thus uh, making us able to not just fully attuned, but really be able to acquire all the sensibility, sensibility in, in total resonance to his heart. And thus, we will be able to also to acquire the value of his as our parent. So I think it is expressed in First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, that it says, do you know, do you know that, do you know not, do you not know that you are God's temple and that of God's spirit dwells in you? So, it is very. It is actually said in so many in some in some um, biblical verses, like in John fourteen twenty, that it uh, it says there that I am in the Father and you are in me and you in and me in you. So in here we can actually actually readily see where do we come from. Uh, yeah, if we have to reflect deeply, uh, and um, if. Had Adam and Eve uh, been able to reach perfection, then we both have uh, should have been uh, Adam and Eve should have been able to to qualify to form a good give and take with God, and uh, that's fulfilling the first blessing or the perfection of character. And um, if that had happened, of course, we could have as individuals who had perfected um, their, themselves, they could have been qualified, I should say, to form a sinless family, bearing God's, um, uh, bearing God-centered children. So from that family, of course, it will be expanded to society, forming a, a, a nation and somehow a world. And then, of course, finally, will be forming a kingdom of uh, of heaven here on this physical earth with um, God as the only parent, forming a one family under one parent. So um, we know very well that the kingdom of heaven is composed of multiple of individuals who have this perfection, no? It should be like that. So people at that, uh, at the people at that, um, in that kingdom should have been um the one uh are are people who are not capable of hurting other people's feelings or can be very responsible on the environment so that is what god has been envisioning uh, when he he actually created uh everything so that is what to me um and then the, the, the divine principle or the news root has expressed explicitly said or expressed here na yun talaga ang pinaka primary purpose ni God sa atong kalibutan sa Bisaya here on earth however yun nga hindi nangyayari di po ba so it is in fact a very sad story or a very fa sad fact that we are all are not capable of forming that vertical relationship with God since it was actually severed from because of uh, the failure of the first human ancestors, which actually at this time has been repeatedly been done by the people. Uh, we can actually observe, no? And then we, people, actually had been performing the same evil deed without us knowing it because we think it is just but natural, you know? If we observe the whole the world now, it seems that what people are acting or doing are natural without them knowing that it's already, it already is harming other people. So we could actually hardly feel the pain of the other people or our neighbors as our own. It, it's very lucky for a person who had that kind of sympathy or empathy, but in the present world, we actually cannot almost see that. So I think, yeah, everybody can relate on that. And then, yeah, at the present moment, of course, 
there are already those who had acquired such, but when you have to compare it to the whole world or to the majority of the whole uh, peop of the people that is occupying the whole universe, it's really not almost visible. So that wa that's why um, because of that, we actually have formed or established the sovereignty of Satan. Okay, so how can we say that this is true? Actually, it is not just, it cannot just be observed, but as you see, it can also be seen in the Bible. In John 4, uh, chapter 12, verse 31, it says, Satan is called the ruler of the world and that God and the God of this world. That is according in according according to Second Corinthians verse four chapter chapter four verse four also. Now, when we die, we will naturally enter the hell of uh, in the spirit world. Do you think so, brothers and sisters? So, for us to understand more our uh, father or have a, a tighter grasp of um, this eschatology, and um, I think it is but. Um, or the story of the last days in the human history, it is also important for us to understand um, these issues through understanding the matters and purpose of God's purpose of God's creation and the meaning of the human fall. I think we have to look back on that for a little while for us to um, address this um, very, very chaotic and very sorrowful um, situations that we are in, and uh, for us to understand also, we where exactly are we heading? Well, what is the goal of the providence of restoration? So, yeah. Now I'm going to discuss to you section through section one, and the purpose of great. Is this it? Uh, the completion of God's purpose of creation and the human fall. So, yeah. I think we knew. Um, so, um, a person has emotionally emotional sensitivity to the heart of God, intuition, and reason to comprehend His will, and the requisite abilities to practice it in the perfect way. I think I already have discussed this. I don't know. Now, ayo, it is very essential that we, as a, a projection of God's dual characteristics. We should be able, um, having mind and body, should have formed a very good um, give and take action. This mind and body having a good give and take action, centering on God, then we can be able to reach perfection and individual, uh, individual perfected being. So this is, as I have been to that a while, this is the prerequisite for us to somehow reach the second uh, blessing. But we know very well that this not ha did not happen. And then here, our value, as I have said, mentioned, it is, and we can actually um, acquire the total unity or the resonance of heart and resonance of heart with our um, creator, God. So we know very well that it didn't happen, right? And then, <laughs> and then we know that it is Adam and Eve who had not reached perfection. That's why we have inherited it at the present time. So it is really very sad that um, we didn't have that much understanding. And up, even up to the present moment, we are still <coughs> trying so hard on how are we going to perfect this and reach this individual perfection. And I think it is, if we recall, it has been discussed that it can we can only actually get started having a good relationship with God if we will receive the blessing, right? So from here, we can understand that our origin actually is really God. And then we are owed to resonate with him so that we will have full understanding where exactly we are going. And then when it is as said here, when we are already, um, if as Adam or it was a man or woman, having reached that unity between or having reached a value of as that of <clears throat> like of God, um, having had um, acquired the <coughs> power and develop all the um, spiritual sensitivity that God has been endowed to us, then we can therefore qualify as uh, 
a true a true Adam or a true Eve or a perfected man or a perfected woman qualified to have children. So here, I think I, it is very clear that um, now that we know the principle, this is what we are owed to follow. Um, it is very necessary that we have this understanding because especially for blessing candidates that um and also us alike that we are very much reminded so that we can really help more people that uh, we can only achieve this if um actually we cannot have that acquire this knowledge without the truth and due truth right so we should be now aware through this we should not be we should now be aware where are we hidden actually so if, through perfecting our characters we can therefore say that um yeah of course qualify as future husband and wife and then centering upon with that uh good give and take relationship to one another centering upon god we can procreate uh children uh, centering upon god and then it would be multiplied into a good society and nature in the world and then we, as i have also mentioned a little while ago that we can become the people who had have this kind of attitude and value uh, and considering other people of the same value to us and everyone would be really responsible and de definitely i believe that uh, with this kind of attitude and with this kind of sensitivity towards i mean um inherited or yeah being manifested actually every day it is no far it is never far for us to be able to actually um develop science in a way so that we can really be able to have the opportunity to manage or 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 enhance and develop all things in the universe and this is what you call it <laughs> the kingdom of heaven here on earth this is actually the ultimate purpose of in all it lang po no na ito yung pinakang purpose natin our origin i would reiterate our origin is having united united to god as his ultimate or the center was all his creation and having that unite uh, unity between mind and body centering upon god forming an in, a perfect individual within can the path that we have to follow is to really build perfected um families and thing upon but and just procreating children and finally all of us all people having had acquired the same um maturity and sensitivity in those to us to god will definitely have dominion over creation so yun yung ating actually yun ang ating origin yun ating way at saka yun ang ating goal um to have dominion over creation thus establishing the kingdom of 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 heaven here on earth so yeah this is it um people of perfected character should advance science and create an extremely pleasant social and living environment here on earth so yeah i think that's all for my section thank you Yeah. Thank you so much. And Sylvia, let's give a round of applause, brothers and sisters. So that is All right, so let's proceed to section two. That's work of salvation. Uh, where is it? Yes, good evening for yeah. okay. everyone. Okay, let us all welcome to give the lecture of section two. That's work of salvation. Uh, let's welcome Ati Jinky. Let's give a round of applause, brothers and sisters. Paxo. Yes, good evening, brothers and sisters. As we continue our yeah, lectures for tonight, just now we uh, yeah we learn about from the, the in the chapter three eschatology and the human history and section one about the completions of God purpose of creation and the human fall. So yeah, as we continue actually we are living in this world which is a lot of conflict actually, right? When uh when we we go back once again to our yeah lectures 
as the past days that we uh, studied about uh, the root of the sin and the human fall actually we yeah how much we can really see that god is really in pain as of this time especially yeah we are in living in this era but until now god is really uh yeah working or how to restore all the humankind so as now we are we are going to study God's work of salvation. So it says, this, God's work of salvation is in, is the providence of restoration. So God's work of salvation is the providence of restoration. Yeah, we are living in this world, the time of era that, yeah, Arab doesn't live. At this time, it's God intended to create a world of goodness and experience from it the utmost joy. Yet, due to the human fall, the world came to be filled with sin and sorrow. Yeah, as God created the world of goodness, which is, nga, as uh, God said, diba, create me, God. Um, yeah, this word to be everything is in good. So it is absolute. The God's will is yeah, is absolute. So yeah. Yet due to the human fall, the word came to be filled with sorrow, with sin and sorrow, which is the problem is the fall, which is our yeah, first human ancestors uh, fall, which is Adam and Eve. But now we are, yeah, until now we are um, suffering also in that. And we, we are in this world that a lot of sin and sorrow without, yeah, we without knowing actually every day, day by day, we are, yeah, doing our, our yeah, sometimes our sins without knowing actually. So if this sins, if this sinful world, to continue forever in the present state, then God would be an impotent and ineffectual God who failed in his crea creation. Therefore, God will save the sinful world by all means. So, in in what way God wanted us to restore? So, at, at, yeah, as the you uh, as. As the problem now is the human fall actually so that's why because because of that the sinful um, this the word we have uh we have a lot of yeah with sin and sorrow so we are now under the sovereignty of yeah satan so god of course when we we can uh, we can say here that like of course, as a parent, like right, we are. Pag nakita ka na parents mo na eh, yeah, you are not in a good uh, uh, situations. Of course, your parents will try to do everything. Yeah, as also God as a parent. Surely, yeah, he will save us. He will save his children. But of course, but it takes time, actually. So as a, of course, as a, as, as a children, we have also the responsibility. But that a human being, how we could fulfill this, uh, yeah, responsibilities that the, that we have so that's why it will become prolonged if we cannot fulfill our portion of responsibility continue to save a person suffering under the yoke of sin of the sin means to restore him to his original sinless state so actually God is working behind of this history as we call it the providence of restoration so god wanted us to save 
from our fallen state to our original state. That's why when we uh, think about it, how we could fulfill once again, as we study about the, uh, what is the purpose of creation, about the three great blessings actually, how we could feel, how we could, how we could fulfill that three great blessings. Yeah. And yeah, in other words, God's work of salvation is the providence of restoration. So uh, God worked behind the history in the providence of restorations. Yeah, without knowing actually, we don't, uh, without knowing, but uh, God is really working in the providence of restorations, how he could be able to find a person who could be able to fulfill the responsibility that he will give. But the problem is until when, like until when is the time? That's why every time is prolonged. So when uh, I think we, we are going to learn this in the other section about the providence of restoration more and more deeply. But yeah, as in section two, the Morrison says, uh, what is uh, the essence of God's work of salvation is, of course, as our God, as our parent, he will find. Uh, he will surely find a way. Of course, how we could uh, restore all his children. Hindi siya bas. Hindi siya pwedeng nakatayu lang na nakikita ka na. Yeah, that he already. Na yun yah. Na you are going in in the wrong way. So that's why in the section two we learn how uh, God's work of salvation and yeah he is really working in behind of all history so i hope you can yeah learn in this uh, section with the more yeah. and we can continue to the yeah to the last uh, to the other section once again yeah thank you so much that's all thank you so much Dr. Jinky. let's give a round of applause Yes, that is uh, the section two. So section one is um, about the, the, the about some kind of recap about the principle of God and the, the principle of creation and then also the human fall. And then section two, because of that of the human fall, we became sinless now and then it's explained by uh, the Dinky that God is trying to save us because we are in a sinful world and God as a, as our parent uh, as, as uh, yes, yes. mentioned by by Jinky as, as parent God wants wanted us to be saved wanted uh, us to go back to him so that is the uh, God's work of salvation and that is that is uh, God's work of salvation is behind the providence of restoration. And human history is the providence of restoration. So now we will proceed to section two. Section two, uh, section, section two, section three, the last things. So if that is the section, if God is trying to save us, the, the, if human history is the providence of restoration and the providence of restoration, restoration is the providence of God's salvation. God's work of salvation. Ano, ba talaga, ano pala talaga ibig sabihin ng last days? Ano ba yung purpose ng last days? Ano ba talaga ang totoong kahulugan pala ng last days? Kung isisip pala, pa, pala naman tayo ni God. So now malalaman natin. We will know about this last days. And it will be lecture without, without further ado. I would like to welcome Miss Christine Bell de Apera. Let's give a round of applause. Uh, brothers and sisters. Good evening once again to all the brothers and sisters. So in continuation for the previous sections, I'll be talking about um, section three of chapter three, the last days. So, 
So do, since we all know that human beings fell, so it was discussed in chapter two that human beings fell. And because of the fall, um, the first human ancestors, our first human ancestors were not was not able to fulfill the, portion, the three great blessings and was not able to realize um, the will of God in accordance with his love and principle. But instead, um, they were able to actualize um, an unprincipled way um, of fulfilling the blood, fulfilling um, of being together, yeah. <laughs> but under the under the dominion of Satan. So human history since then has been the history of God's providence of restoration. So despite this, despite its evil beginning. The world under the sovereignty of Satan must one day be transformed into the world where goodness reigns, where the three great blessings are fulfilled, centered on God's love and principle. So that is the last day. So the Messiah comes at this time of transformation. So the meaning of the last days. So the last days is the time when the advent of the Messiah as a turning point, the evil world under satanic sovereignty is replaced by the ideal world under God's sovereignty. So hell on earth will be transformed into the kingdom of heaven on earth. So um, therefore, the last days is not um is not a day is not to be a day of fear when the world will be destroyed by global catastrophes as many christians have believed in fact it will be a day of joy when the cherished hope of humankind the desires of ages will be realized so um that uh since human beings fell god has attempted more than once to consummate his providence to restore the original world nevertheless at each attempt, human beings fail to fulfill their responsibility, thus frustrating God's will. God's will. Consequently, dispensations of the last days have been repeated several times. This can be confirmed by a close study of the Bible. So the last days have repeated twice already, and it will have it will be repeated thrice. Yeah, the third time this time. So yeah. So the first um the first time where the last day have occurred was in Noah's time. So Noah's day was the last days. So God wanted to destroy by the flood, evil road, and the sinful history, biblically, biblically reckoned as 1,600 years, raising up Noah's family and resurrecting the ideal world upon the foundation of their faith. If we're, I think we're all familiar with um, the 40-day flawed judgment that have happened and then that is written in the bible so that time is considered is 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 the last days however even though um god has already um god was able to uh had the last days that time since due to the failure of noah's family specifically of his son um the last days was not was once again claimed by satan so it was not completely successful, and thus it has to be once again prolonged to another period of time. That is why, um, in the second um period, wherein the period of Jesus Christ, it was also known as the last days. So Jesus' days was also the last days. God sent Jesus to vanquish the satanic sovereignty and establish the God-centered ideal world, written in the book of John, chapter five verse 22 so the day of the second advent uh so here yeah and then lastly the day of the second advent is also the last days so he will accomplish to go the providence of restoration both spiritually and physically and restore the kingdom of heaven on earth since we all know that um jesus was not able to fulfill completely fulfill god's um the mission that god has entrusted to him since he was crucified uh, yeah, he was crucified. Although, and the restoration that the uh, the salvation that um, human beings have um, received was only spiritually. So, so in the coming of the second advent, um, he will be able. He needs to accomplish the goal of the providence of restoration, both spiritually and physically, and be able to establish firmly establish the kingdom of heaven here on earth.
So yeah, so for brothers and sisters, there are three times, um, three periods of the last days. The first one is on Nova's time. Second is on Jesus time. And the third one, and hopefully the last one, is um, the time or the period of the second advent. So now let's talk about the Bible verses concerning the signs of the last days. So many Christians believe that in the last days, natural calamities and radical changes beyond the imagination of modern men will take place as literally written in the Bible. If you are very, um, I think we are all familiar with um, the time before 2012, Everyone believed that by 2012 it will become it will be the end of the world. And personally, I was one of I was still um, ten years old at that time, and I was I I really thought that it would be the last days because many people have been it was it was the talk of the town that the, that the end of the world is coming, and by the, by 2012 the world will be ending, and uh, as a young kid, I was very scared because um, although I have known, I have been um, taught my with by my parents, I have been influenced by um, the Christian context outside in the secular world, wherein their understanding of the Bible is generally and mostly literally. Uh, yeah, they took everything in the Bible literally, and that is why um, when there are many passages in the bible that when you read it when you take it literally it sounds it, it's beyond imagination of a person and yeah i think we're all familiar with that thing and i hope you're not like me who strongly thought that 2012 was the end of the world because yeah but we were able to make it and yeah yeah so yeah, and let us investigate what the prophecies concerning the last days actually symbolize. So the first one is heaven and earth um, will be destroyed and a new heaven and new earth will be created. So it was written in the book of Genesis chapter um, 6 verse 13 that Jesus, I, God said that I will destroy them with the earth. So this is written um, uh, during the period of Noah and then also, um, it was written in the book of Revelations, chapter 21, verse 1, um, where in it, was, it's, it states there that a new heaven and a new earth will be created. However, in the book of um, Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 4, it says that the earth remains forever. And it's just, um, yeah, in the book of Psalms, chapter 78 and verse 69 it says that like the earth which he has founded forever so general genesis chapter 6 verse 13 says that god determined to destroy the earth in noah's time that the world was not destroyed we all know that it only the, the only happening at noah's time was the flood judgment the 40-day flood judgment and uh, second uh, and then um also the earth is eternal as a Ecclesiastic. 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 Yes. Yes. Yeah, that one. Chapter 1, verse 4 says, A generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. And in written in the book of Psalms, chapter 78 and verse 69, it says that he built his sanctuary like the high heavens, like the earth, which he has founded forever. So from here, brothers and sisters, we can say that the prophecies that heaven and earth will be destroyed mean that the tyranny of Satan will be overthrown, and not the literal, that not the literal um, destruction of the earth, but instead the dominion. Um, yeah, the tyranny of Satan will be overthrown. So to create a new heaven, a new earth means then to restore heaven and earth to God's sovereign founded on Christ since we all know that um, because because of the human fall um, the ruler of the new ruler of uh, I, human beings have been under God's I, Satan's sovereignty and thus it must be restored to God's sovereignty so the second passage that we will be talking about is um, wherein it says that heaven and earth will be judged by fire it is written by second set book of the second book of Peter, chapter 3, verse 12. 
So what is the meaning of the prophecy that the heavens will be kindled and dissolved and the elements will melt with fire in the last days? So Malachi, um, prophesying of the time of Jesus, spoke if, um, spoke of a day burning with fire of judgment. So Jesus also said, I came to cast fire upon the earth. So nevertheless, there is no record that in his time of in the time of Jesus, um, in his time, Jesus judged the world with literal fire. Even if we thoroughly study the Bible, we can we cannot find we can't find any record of that. So it is written and and it is written in the book of Jeremiah, chapter twenty three, verse twenty nine, that it is not my will is not my word like fire. So therefore. From here, we can conclude that judgment by fire represents judgment by the word of God. So the fire would, is equivalent to the God's words. Uh, moving on. So the third one is that the dead, the dead rising from their songs. Written in the book of, and the first book of the... Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. So um, in Matthew chapter 27, verse 52, it says that at the time of Jesus' death, the tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. But this verse does not mean that the decomposed body of the saints literally rose up from their graves. And even if we try to draw and if... Um, we it cannot also it cannot be um through uh proven even by the modern science so it's not possible that um <laughs> um our bodies will be will be coming back to life from the graves so yeah so this record was made by people who could perceive the spirits of the past saints being resurrected spiritually and appearing on the earth. So the realm of the spirit, the region of the spirit world, where the spirits of the Old Testament, sa Old Testament saints were abiding, appears to be a dark place when viewed from paradise. So the realm of the spirit world opened by Jesus. Hence, it is referred to as the tomb. So here, so the dead rising from their tombs actually mean that um, the spirit of the past saints will be resurrected spiritually, wherein the tomb here refers to the realm of the spirits in the spirit world. So moving on, and then lastly, we'll be talking about, um, the, the, this will be the last point that I, the Bible verse that you will be talking about. So um, it, says, it says here that people on earth caught up to meet the Lord in the air. So find in the book of a uh, first book of Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 17. So the air in this verse does not refer to the sky over our heads. So in the Bible, earth is often a symbol for the fallen world under the sway of evil sovereignty, while heaven is often a symbol for the sinless world of good sovereignty. So therefore, the heaven and air, uh, the heaven here rep represents so the air represents the sinless world and the earth, uh, and the earth represents the fallen world. So meeting the Lord in the air means that the saints will receive the Lord in the world of good sovereignty when Christ comes again and restore the kingdom of heaven on earth by defeating the kingdom of heaven. So it is not um, what kingdom. many have believed, uh, a kingdom of Defeating the kingdom of Satan. So it is not what many have believed that, and many Christians have thought and believed that. Um, but in the during the last days, there will be um, in rapture. But not, what do you call that? Um, that it's not that God, uh, the Lord will be um, coming from the clouds, and then we will be meeting him from the air. But instead, it's um, it. It means that um, we will be receiving the Lord in the world of good sovereignty when Christ comes again and restores the kingdom of heaven. So from all of this, brothers and sisters, uh, 
uh, yeah, and from all of this, we can perceive that um, there are a lot of passages that the Bible itself must not be taken literally, but there we must be able to, we must study the Bible thoroughly, and the and that the, this is where the um the mission of the new truth really comes in because there's a lot of passages in the bible that um, many have um took literally but should not be so that is why um it's really important that we study the new truth and yeah so in conclusion to all of these things all of those all of those things um father said reverend sun young Moon said that when viewing human history is god's providence of salvation the last days is a turning point when the evil history of satan concludes and god's good sovereignty begins accordingly the last days are the time when everything is brought to fulfillment thus in the last days individual perfection is to be realized family perfection is to be realized the perfection of a people of a nation of the world and finally Finally, the complete fulfillment of the cosmos is to be realized. Therefore, so in, during the last days, our mission, um, uh, the last days is the day wherein we have um, the fulfillment of the three great blessings, blessing in accordance to God's sovereign principle will occur. So that will be all brothers and sisters. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Bea. Let's give a round of applause. Bravo, bravo. All right, so we all knew now the meaning of the last days. So we can therefore uh, conclude that the last days is not the time for us to be afraid, but it is the time that we must rejoice because it is the transformation, the turning point of transformation from Satan's dominion to God's very dominion. And since today is the last days, we shouldn't worry about, um, about those literal interpretation about uh, the end of the world, that uh, by fire, by water, but it is the transformation of the world. But, you know, the world will not transform easily, so it, it must start individual so yeah thank you so much yeah so let's proceed now to section four you know she's ready so section four the last days and the present days so what since today is the last days so we will have to learn from this about yeah what is it what um the science i think yeah the science of the last days so Without further ado, let us all welcome Miss Cherubel uh, Lumokso. Let's give a round of applause, brothers and sisters. Akso. Hey, good evening. Uh, good evening to our victorious heavenly parents and to our victorious true parents and to all of us. Good evening. And in continuation with uh, Kristen Bell's topic, so the last days. So we will discover if we are now living in the last days. So today is the last day. So what are the signs to prove that today is the last days? So we will know that through our history. So our history uh, should have started with the three great blessings, right? And that is written in the Bible. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, In the beginning, God said to Adam and Eve, Be fruitful, multiply, and have dominion. But because of the fall, Adam and Eve did not receive the blessings, the first, second, and the third blessing. So this is the reason why we have to attain full salvation and to restore the world that comes from the original or ideal plans of God, which are the first and 
first, second, and the third blessing. So, if the three great blessings did not happen, we cannot say that we are saved, right? Why? Because God does not plan to save a single person or a family alone. So, just like what true parents, uh, true fathers said, now what what will you feel if if you are safe but your wife or your family is not safe what will you feel if um your family is safe but other families are not so so what will be the heart of god so the the true meaning of salvation is god's love to his children and he wants to save all humankind and the creation why because we are all sons and daughter but we are we are all uh, sons and daughters of god but the process of the restoration is a very long process so god needs to start from one person to family tribe nation and family the whole world and time will come that we will attain salvation and that is by going through the process of the restoration of the three great blessings because that is the ideals of God. So we can deduce that today is in fact the last day by examining the various circumstances of the present age. So we can recognize in these circumstances the restoration of the three great blessing which God has pro proposed in his providence of restoration. And the first blessing is the perfection of individual character. So, now the first blessing is the restoration of individual character. And that is uh, one of the sign, the first sign is the spirit, uh, spirituality of fallen, uh, fallen people is being restored. So when a person reaches perfection, we're able to converse with God, just like what Adam and Eve before. So when they fell from this state, they caused this uh, descendants also to sin and into ignorance of God. So the Bible prophecies in Acts 2nd verse 17 in the last days i will point out my put out my pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and as we witness a profession of spiritual phenomena taking place all around us we can discern that the present era is the last days so if we observe right now uh, many people trying and seeking spiritually so why is that so because even if you are a genius like a scientist no still they have so many questions in mind and some of them realize that even how genius they are still they are not able to solve all the problems in the world even the problems within themselves so and even now rich no rich uh, person uh, it's like they can have all the luxuries around the world <laughs> they can have everything they want in life but still they have problems that they cannot solve and there are reasons why more people are seeking religions so even if they have everything at this moment most of them are actually seeking spiritual uh, salvation or seeking religions where they can uh, devote themselves and most of them is trying to obtain peace spiritually so that is the sign of restorations of individual purpose. So people nowadays are seeking more on internal or spiritual fulfillment of their lives. 
So the second sign of the first blessing is being restored in the present era can be seen in historical trend toward the recovery of the freedom of the original mind of the fallen people now as a sign so due to the fall our original mind is being tied down under satan so we are uh, we lost the freedom to come before god so example we are uh, before we are being suppressed by different form of government so we are being controlled and educated differently so before no one is allowed to hold a bible so uh, there are some government who took uh, bibles and burned them right so so those are hindrances and then to be good is not an option during this time because other people will dictate what you will do and what you will think in your mind as well so it depends on those people who controlled over us so we cannot uh, we do not have the freedom to think and do things right or wrong as said before people were more focused on how to survive so now in the present era so we have um eager desire to gain true freedom so we can think uh freely and now uh in time we are where you are allowed to express your ideas views and op opinions freely so we now have religious freedom no so that is not being dictated by the government so this indicates that we are now entering the present era in which we can attain individual perfection and we can freely go before god so the third sign is the restoration of human value of the fallen people so we can observe nowadays that people is trying to be free spiritually so this indicates that they are also trying to find the true value of human life so our purpose of the purpose of our existence so the democratic ideals have flourished more people advocating um the independence right so uh of the slaves and then uh of the weak and the small nations so those who are being um ruled by other nations and advocating human rights so as well as gender equality and among all people so more than before people are uplifting the values of individuals towards the original value so people are trying to find and experience true love within themselves and the the philosophy of the universal love because uh because of the wide uh, widespread of that people are trying to uh, reach these individual perfections and those are the signs of the restorations of the first blessing which is the perfections of character so so that is the last the original true love in fallen people that is being restored so we are now in uh in the present era where we are uh, finding love and we are also uh trying to uh receive no love the give and take of being uh, loved and to be loved so now let's proceed uh, proceed to the sign of the second blessing so 
God's second blessing was for Adam and Eve to form a family, society, and world where goodness reigns. So, accordingly, in the sign of the internal and external restorations of God's sovereignty, uh, signify the restorations of the second blessing. So, these are manifested as trends in the history of the development of cultural sphere and in the history of the rise and fall of the nations. So, in the history of the development of the cultural sphere, like, uh, let us first uh, study the history of the development of the internal spheres. So, God has sent prophets and saints to fallen humanity to found religion. He works to develop them through the original minds of those who seek goodness in this way. So, God builds up cultural spheres based all upon religion. And many religions have left their mark on history. Among them, the religions with the greatest influence form cultural spheres. So the major cultural spheres which have existed at various times in the world history numbered between 21 and 26. So what happened? Yep. So with the flow of history, the lesser cultural uh, spheres were absorbed by or merged into the more advanced spheres. So through the evolution of cultural sphere, as they were buffeted by the rise and the fall of nations, four great cultural spheres have survived to the present day. So these are the East Asian spheres, the Hindu sphere, and the Islamic sphere, and the Christian sphere. So, so these are the the major spheres that survived. No? So uh, the current trend has these four spheres. So forming the global culture of spheres. Based on the Christian ethos. So when we study the history of humanity, it will always point back to the religions, no? so religious culture, even before, until it is being developed into different kinds of cultures. So, in the present era, the world has been combined into one cultural sphere based on Christian ideals. So, as the world has been greatly influenced by the teaching of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. So, like actually in Islam, they're the Muslims. So, they believe that Jesus Christ is their prophet or Messiah. So, it is the same with the Christian's belief. So, so these four major cultures, cultural sphere, forms a global culture based on religion. And God is working on every individual in their original minds to seek goodness, lay by establishing a religion and this religion becomes one culture which will lead humankind to become godly children so we can certainly say that the present era is the last day so next we will look at the external history of the rise and fall of the nations so the purpose of history of the rise and fall of the nations is to cut our ties with Satan and restore God's sovereignty of goodness. So in order to achieve the purpose of the so uh, providence of restoration, history must go through the process of wars and division. So the war which have shaped the rise and fall of nations are Thus, unavoidable, 
during the course of the pro uh, providence to reestablish the reign of good. So the history of conflicts among nations has served the purpose of cutting off Satan's ties to humankind. So history has progressed to the point where God's side can now reclaim territories and wealth all over the world. The providence to reclaim people began from lone individuals called by God. So God's foundation has progressively expanded to families, societies, and national levels. And um, today, it has reached the world level. So when we look at the history of the rise and fall of the nations, it is not just a coincidence, right? But part of the history of the recreation and the providence must go through the process of wars and division. So it is a fight between good and Satan, between good and evil or God and Satan, which result in wars. And that is to divide good and evil. And with that, the purpose of the Messiah is to unite this good and evil. And the evil must voluntarily submit to God. So that is the rise and fall of the nation. So it does not happen by accident or done by individuals or uh, national leaders alone, but rather a will of God. So continuation of the sign of the restorations of the second blessing. So the uh, eternally at present, all races and peoples are increasingly coming to stand side by side as brothers and sisters under the love and guidance of Jesus Christ. So therefore, externally, at present, our world is divided into two democratic worlds which uh, seek to create societies on God's side and the communist world which has been establishing regimes on Satan's side. So these two oppose, uh, opposing forces are at the point of intersection. And hence, the present age is the last days because the second blessing is restored. So, so we have this uh, democratic world and a communist world right now. And... Uh, internal side and the cultural spheres and the center of all religion is christianity so why because the teaching because of the teaching of christianity focuses on god as our parent and we are as brothers and sisters so the restorations of the second blessing starts with the development of the cultural spheres based on the teaching of jesus christ and externally, we have democratic and communist world, the rise and fall of nation. So all of this happens with a sole purpose, which is to restore the original creation of God. So now let's proceed to the third blessing. So the third blessing means gaining dominion over the natural world. And externally... Oh, yeah. Internally, dominion denotes dominion of the heart. And externally, dominion denotes proper mastery of the creation through science and technology. So let us study more about the internal dominion. So a person who reaches perfection and comes fully to resonate with God in heart will experience God's heart as his own reality. Hence, he will be able to love the creation with the same love as that which emanates from God's heart and appreciate its beauty with the same delight as God. So this is the meaning of the dominion of heart. 
So people are now more concerned about the creation, right? So, so every um, every nations uh, promotes like proper waste management. So like the three R's: reduce, reuse, recycle, and then more people are being concerned of the environment, and they started to notice how environment have changed over time without proper care. So, um, so because of this uh, climate change, global warming, you know, forest fire, typhoons at, that now become stronger, and some other phenomena that leads to the destructions of human beings, uh, we realize that we should take care of our environment because we and the environment and we need both each other, you know? Like, say, example, the oxygen and the carbon dioxide. So those plants need the, the carbon dioxide, and we as well ne need those oxygen. So what will happen if in just a few minutes there will be no oxygen? So do you think people will survive? Or if we are not going to... Uh, release carbon dioxide do you think uh trees plants will survive no right so today um most of us realized how important the environment is so we are now trying to um really take good care of our environment and so about the external dominion had our first ancestor reached perfection and attained internal dominion over the creation, able to love, love it with the same heart as God, then their sensibility to the spiritual dimension of creation would have developed to... Oh, where, are, where am I? of the creation would have developed to the highest degree. And this would have stimulated in the rapid, whoop, I cannot find now. Why? Okay. Sorry. I cannot, I cannot find the last page. This one I cannot remove. Yeah, how? Okay. Ah, judgment of trials. Ah, and okay. So sorry, as the technology uh, evolves, my 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 capability of using technology does not. <laughs> so. And continuation. So th this would have stimulated the rapid advancement of science. So that's it. So. Eternally. Uh, God's providence of restoration through religion, uh, philosophy, ethics, and so forth has gradually elevated the spirituality of fallen people toward God. And in the modern world, uh, there is evidence that people are regaining the worthiness to govern the creation through heart. So externally, modern people have built an extremely comfortable and pleasant living environment through the economic progress that has accompanied scientific development. So like, um, you know, there are a lot of development that we can observe nowadays in terms of communication, transportation, shelter. So um, the same with machineries and all these are for our comforts. So 
observing signs of of the reestablishment of God's third blessing in connection with uh, both religion, philosophy, and science, no? We, uh, we are assured that the present era is the last days. So to summarize, the world's cultural spheres are converging toward one global cultural sphere based on one religion. And concurrently, nations are moving toward forming a world government centered on the United Nations. So in the sphere of economics, the world is moving in the direction of establishing one international market and highly developed transportation and communication technology have overcome the separations of time and space. So people today can travel and communicate with each other almost as if they were all living in the same village. So like what we are doing right now, right? So we are from different parts of the world or maybe we are in a different parts of the Philippines, but now we are, we are communicating like we are in face-to-face -face communication. So, so people of all races can meet with one another as easily as if we are members of a large family. Hence, we can understand that God has been restoring the environment where humanity can find and attain, attend the returning of the Lord. So that is all for the section four. Yes, thank you very much. So let's give a round of applause for the sisters. Those are the signs of the last days. Uh, so today is really the last days. Because we've observed in our uh, surroundings that there are some changes, development internally and externally. And now our last section. The last days, the new truth and our attitude. How are we going to receive the new truth? So without further ado, I would like to welcome again at the Sylvia Diabella. Let's give a round of applause. Bakso, bakso. So good evening, brothers and sisters. Okay. Um, once again, I'm tasked to discuss to you the last days and the new truth, as well as our attitude. So um we knew very well that in the previous lectures we already know the the characteristics of god who is that could be perceived through the spirit and truth however we also know that the truth is in itself has two types the internal and the external right so it can on it can easily be perceived or be understood by us as human beings as the center of the creation through our mind and body or through our spiritual self and the physical self since god is a unique eternal and, and eter eternal and unchanging god he his will also is the same uh in like manner um having created man has his ultimate or the center of his creation um her, post, her purpose of complete i mean his, his purpose uh, of having man created is also uh unique eternal and unchanging right so yeah i think so that's that's um that's the real the reality 
uh, that was being projected to us in chapter one, no? And then, however, we also knew that balik lang gawai na because of the fall, that original will of God was not realized. It was discussed, and then right there when in the, the Garden of Eden. When the first human ancestors failed, actually, as discussed by our the section two, um, God immediately started His providence of restoration, of bringing us all His children to His original state. So, uh, yeah, we are we because of the fall, we become ignorant, right? We don't know our origin. We are we heeding what what is our final destination actually because of that. So since I um, because as uh, discussed in section two. God actually at the background has been working so hard to bring us back to our original state. And then in section three, it is also said, uh, it has been clearly discussed what the last list is all about. And uh, in chapter, in section four, it, we are also given the very clear um, presentation on, on, on the signs that we are indeed in the last days. So due to that fall, man really become totally ignorant right but god actually also at the same time has assisted ignorant fallen people to elevate our spirituality and have enlightened our intellect through spirit and truth so alam natin na uh, because ignorant tayo we actually has been seeking to to address this ignorance through actually religion and science right so by this means, actually, God conducts his providence to restore us all back to his our original state before the fall. And then, yeah, spirit and truth are unique, eternal, and unchanging. And then, however, uh, we also knew in the previous presentations that uh, the, this, the degree and scope of the other uh, teaching and the means of their expression of this truth bar vary from one age to the other. It is... Yeah, I think it has been clearly presented, and that so that we human uh, human being can be able to be restored to our uh, original state, thus um, bringing us out from that other ignorance that we had been uh, experiencing. So, okay. <laughs> so, um. If um yeah, okay. Thank you, thank you. So if we recall a little bit, uh, we fallen people had been as as stated in the a little while ago, as I had said. Now the the expression of truth uh, varies from age to age. So if we recall a little bit, when Adam and Eve failed up to the time of Abraham, since our spirituality has not been raised uh, to a ex certain extent. Actually, uh, fallen people has uh, been uh, trying to connect back to God through offerings. But then comes the time of, of Moses, if uh, to uh, no, Moses, that uh, our intellectuality has raised to a certain degree that uh, it has, God has actually uh, expressed to us the truth through laws, you know? So, yeah, here we can also, just like also in the time of Jesus Christ, yeah, that um, when the gospel was being taught to us, actually the spirituality of people has already uh, raised to a certain degree that it is already capable of perceiving God's truth. But we knew that at the present time, due to our presentations in the previous uh, um, sections, uh, today is another day, another time of last days. So yeah, just to uh, um, to have a little track backtrack. Yeah, we know the the first last days occur during the Noah time of Noah, and then finally the the second last days occurred during. The time of Jesus Christ, and now in the time of the Second Advent, uh, we uh, we would modern people who have reached an intellectual um, capacity uh, able to perceive 
uh, and realize the truth through this new truth that we are now studying um, with a richer content and which is more scientific in method of expression is uh, actually we are already capable of, of perceiving it, of understanding it, understanding it. So this is now the new truth, okay? So I don't have to discuss much on the on the last list because it also did been, been presented just a while ago. So I do think it's very clear for us to understand further. So when we speak about the last days, it is we can actually examine this as it is said in John chapter three, verse twelve. Jesus said, "I have told you on earthly things that you do not believe." How can you believe if I tell you heaven, heavenly things? So, actually, Jesus Christ, he actually, Jesus Christ died on the cross without being able to teach all that was he was supposed to. And that uh, what was exactly it in his heart due to the disbelief of the people at home during his time, right? So, um, also, we also uh, can see in in John 16, um, verse 12, that it says, I have yet so many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. So at that time, actually, Jesus Christ was expressing, expressing his sorrowful heart that he cannot be able to convey to him, uh, to us, uh, what exactly is, um, is the truth at that time. Because, you know, uh, even his closest disciple was not able to receive what he wanted to really share uh, because of the disbelief of these people who had on the last days yeah at that time so also it is um but jesus promised that in the last days he will give us the new word of truth as said in uh, john chapter over uh, chapter 16 verse 25 he said i have th said this to you in figures the hour is coming <clears throat> when i shall no longer be speaking oh no longer speak to you in figures but tell you plainly of the father so right this time brothers and sisters i think we are very aware that the truth the new truth or the divine principle that we're studying has been um trying to elucidate to us clearly what has um what are this new truths how can we be able to actually um how can we be able to restore uh, through our responsibility the what was lost in the Garden of Eden? No? So in this new dispensation, as this new dispensation begins, uh, actually the old dispensation is about to end. And it is very true. Um, we are all, I think it was... Uh, discussed about the discussed in the previous chapter i uh, sections that um when a new truth uh, is is uh is going to begin the old one is really uh, has to end meaning just like a lamp which is um like a candle a candlelight can be outshone by maybe a light of a bulb but at the same time, a light of a bulb can be outshone by the light of the sun. It's uh, it's the same as like that. So during this time, when we are on this um, certain period of time, actually, people who are living in this period actually suffer a lot internally. Like, yeah, at the present time, uh, we, we can see that um, even if, People desire to have good families. Um, even if we wanted to take care of our environment, maybe. Even if we wanted the best thing for ourselves. And yet, we are, um, and then through our old, um, maybe religious belief and cultural sphere that we've been raised up, still people suffer a lot, a lot of you know, fear and anxiety and confusion. Uh, this is because um, due to the absence of a guiding ideology of philosophy, meaning what has been taught to us before is no longer enough, you know, 
Oh, so that's it. So we also suffer externally from strife and battles fought from fearsome, fearsome weapon, weapons. Actually, at the present day, it is really almost, almost no need to explain because what we can observe in around us is really the substantiation of what this is all saying. Uh, we are all saying, like for example, wars are no longer fought like in the um, uh, yes, make siguro centuries back is spada lang, spare and arrow bow, something like that. But this time we use already nuclear bombs and and this kind of thing. So. It's really very, very um, obvious that we are in the last days, as being presented by our previous speaker, no, our lecturer. So, in the midst of this wretchedness, God without fail has been uh, well established, the center of the emerging good sovereignty, in order to usher in a new in the new age. So we knew in the uh, previous presentation that uh, everything that has happened internally and externally both our desires to to be resonated to god's heart and in the external things that has been happening here in this physical earth is existing or has happened with god working at the background because this is actually his way of of um bringing us back to a new age yeah it seems cruel no but uh, union god has been working so hard actually i never ceased of bringing us back to the original state where we are, we do come from, or when he has originally created man and woman. No? And um, so, but then uh, it is also clearly said that because we had been, yeah, we had not been able to, humankind has was not able to establish God's kingdom or good sovereignty here on earth, and uh, because he has that very ultimate, uh, very, very strong and 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 absolute uh, will to realize that goodness uh, of sovereignty here on earth, actually, um, that's why he has been working so hard. In a sense, due to the fall that uh, we had established instead um, satanic sovereignty, therefore, at the present age, at the last days, this satanic sovereignty must have to come to an end. And it's a good sovereignty centering upon God should get started. So what should be, uh, and so we people should not be strongly attached to the conventional concepts that we rather had and usually have, um, but rather we should uh, make ourselves direct, uh, direct ourselves to perceive the spirit in order that we may find a new truth which can guide us to the providence of the new age so oh wait wait a minute sorry sorry so what would be our attitude then on this present what would be our attitude then on this present day uh, when we have to be on this present era of um, in the transition period uh, from the bad sovereignty or from Satan sovereignty to the, the good sovereignty. So our our attitude should have been what? As it stated, we should not be strongly at us because, you know, we know very well that in the... In the time of Jesus Christ, the the people's disbelief made Jesus Christ unable to fulfill his will, right? So in like manner, in this third attempt, or the third last days that we are all present at, we should also not be attached to the conventional concepts that we had we are used to, that we think is normal, is we think is uh, had been practiced. Oh, it is not thing. We actually had been practicing all our lives, right? Instead, we should uh, direct ourselves or be able to connect ourselves to the central figure designated by God to guide us and to present to us this new truth, which is a divine principle, for us to be able to be in, at, oh, should I say, be attuned to this new truth that has been presented to us by our true parents, no? So how can we be able to think that uh, or may perceive or recognize that we are actually participating 
that we are become taking part. Uh, we become we would like we are taking part on this first historical transition. What would be our attitude? I would uh, say again that we should be able to find that central person. Now, who is that central person that has has been designated by God? It is already our true parents, and also we should be able also to have an open mind, as it is said here, for us to be able to understand the new truth, but um, and the some, somehow confirm these concepts to be. Uh, uh, to be applicable in the present time of this new age, no? And but we cannot have just done it all by because we wanted to. We should also do it with um, outer humility in heart, and also in a with a prayerful, prayerful, uh, prayerful manner, so that we can really be able to attune to the spirit. So this can really be we can really be able to receive this truth. Okay. So that I think that that's it. That would be our. That should be our attitude. That should manifest. We should manifest that we should really uh, uh, have not just show because we are being asked to, but we have to discern it within ourselves. What kind of attitude we should do so that we can be able to participate in this present era of transition, where the bad sovereignty or the Satan sovereignty will really have to come to an end, and finally a good sovereignty will be realized. That's all, brothers and sisters. Thank you. Hmm? Thank you very much. Again, <laughs> and Sylvia, let's give a round of applause, brothers and sisters. Okay. Um, so, yeah, those are the sections. Uh, yeah, that is the lecture of the chapter three. Uh, eschatology and human history. So I hope marami tayo natutunan. And yeah, and marami din tayong dapat ma-realize because yeah, we are living now in the last days with the Messiah. So we are the one who knew the Messiah and which means we, we are responsible of restoring our brothers and sisters outside. And we should have also this uh, parental heart, the same with our, with God. Na, um, in, in saving the world, we cannot, we should not let other people left behind. We should serve, uh, we should, we should uh, save our, everybody, whatever, our religion, whatever our beliefs, yeah. Because God wanted all His ch children to go back to His body. All right. So open your camera <laughs> and let's start the. Kailangan po bang magano? Ano na lang? Alit na. He wants to volunteer. Sino gusto mag-volunteer? Share their heart. Um, okay. Since konti lang kayo, so I have to call everybody. And, oh, meron. May nag-raise ng hand. Si Justado. Okay, let's welcome. May Justado. Uh, good evening, guys and parents. Good evening, leaders and brothers and sisters. Good evening. Good evening. Any group? Any group? Yes. Kuba ako dyan. Yeah, medyo pito, potol potol pero pwede na. Ah. Ah. Ah yes, na ano ko lang. Okay, okay. Ngayon ko lang na ano, na-realize na ito na talaga yung ano, yung huling araw. Kasi yun nga.
high tech na ngayon eh. Kaya uh, high tech tapos may away-away uh, ano ah uh, jun. Oh. So, nakatakot. <laughs> Kasi ano na nga, uh, nag-away-away na yung mga tao dahil sa religion. At uh, yun, ang kul dun sa ano, araw, is magkakaroon ng absence of, yun pala yung ano, yung realize ko na in of the world pala na sinasabi ng uh, mga Christians is uh, ng ideology. Oh. Tapos ang ano pala ang uh, ang uh, yung yung pagsalubong pala ni Nat, natin kay Jesus is is yung uh, yung yung nga yung uh, environment of God sa uh, I guess yun lang yun lang Thank you very much, Dado. Yes. To yeah, the, uh, the last days and yeah, yung ita yung ano na even this is our belief in before we meet the movement, right? So we thought that the end of the world, literally, but it is according to the principle. Yeah. Um, it is the transformation of from Satan's sovereignty to God's sovereignty. So we shouldn't be worried after it. Or somehow, because um, the last last days, um, it is necessary. Conflict is necessary, and actually, it will be explained in the chapter two, uh, part two of the. Uh, Uh, divine principle, but to give you a hint, uh, conflict is necessary because it, during the last days, it's because it is to separate uh, Satan and God, and it and in order for Satan to voluntarily submit towards God. So anyway, it will be explained more in the part two of the divine. But now, so today is is the last days, and. Yes, so we should be happy, especially us, because so they have said we are the one who knew the principle, and we are the one who are we, uh, who is with uh, who are with true parents, um, as mentioned with at the Selvia All right, thank you so much. And who wants to volunteer? Another one. Don't be shy. Feel at home. Get all you can. Kala nyo ba kayo nyo to? Yeah. Who wants to volunteer? Eh, meron. Ay, akala ko magtatasa ng kamay si Ate Feli. Alas welcome, Ate Feli na lang. Alas welcome, Ate Feli. Munti ka na magtaas ano? Ano? Munti ka magtaas ng kamay. Munti ka magtaas hindi na. Ano, ah uh, kasi kasi nga ang topic natin natin ngayon is about the last day. So ah uh, ano lang uh, wala naman uh, sa para sa ano no, kumbaga hindi naman natin masabi kung kailan talaga ang katapusan ng mundo. So ang ano lang sa atin na bilang tao is uh, Kumbaga maging handa lang tayo. Hindi ta hindi tayo hindi natin ano dapat 
katakutan kung ano kung ang kamatayan bagkus paghandaan natin ito sa paglago sa kabanalan at pagsisikap na makamtan ang buhay na walang hanggan. Mm. Yun lang naman kasi kumbaga ano naman eh uh, sa kumbaga sa iba na iba na religion, may mga sinasabi na ano na uh, kumbaga uh, ano uh, ang katapusan ng mundo ay ganito ay ganito kailangan talaga ano. Kumbaga walang walang akma talaga na yun na talaga ang end of the world. So, yun na lang. Uh, kailangan lang natin maging handa palagi sa kung ano man ang mangyayari. Yun lang sa akin. Yes, thank you so okay. much, Adesali. So, let's always prepare ourselves. Whatever. Yeah, magiging handa lang. Every may come. Yeah. Alright, thank you so much. So, how do we prepare? <laughs> yeah, that's 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 another question. How do we prepare uh, internally and externally, so that when the right time comes, when the Messiah comes, and then are we ready to face and to follow the Messiah? Well, in fact, we already knew who is the Messiah. So, are we following the Messiah now? I think so, because you are attending 21 days right now. It's, a, it's another step also of pre- uh, preparing ourselves. Especially uh, those who are, those, uh, yeah, you are, you are preparing for your blessing. And it's a preparation of Tony. This is a part of education for you, brothers and sisters. And uh, yeah, we are very grateful, after. Thank you for coming with us, together with us here. Okay, so who else? Yun para naki- uh, I could see the uh, the bright spirit. <laughs> kahit, kahit nakatago yung ano, pero I can see the bright spirit. Welcome. Ah, si Ate Marilu. Ate Marilu. You have the same name with my, ano, my tita. <laughs> Take your time, Te. Na, na, nalibot na namin yung bahay nyo. Nakita na namin. <laughs> this, this is store, guys. Okay? Please watch carefully. So, hindi ka namin na naririnig. Ate Malu? Wala, wala ate. Tanggalin nyo lang kaya yung headset nyo tayo. Tapos, ano na lang siguro. Siguro sa Sa ano yan? Airphone. Hello po. Yun. Okay. Yes, they welcome. Opo. Hello po. Sensya na po kasi maliit lang yung bahay kaya nalilib na kayo lahat. <laughs> Kasya naman tayo, te. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ano, yun lang, agree lang ako kay ano sa sinabi doon ni Sister uh, Feli. Na magkaibigan ba kayo? Na lang natin kung ano yung <laughs> Oh, magkasama kami niyan eh, magka-batch kami. <laughs> ah, kaya pala. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Yo, agree lang din ako sa sinabi niya na ano, na paghanda paghandaan na lang natin po ano yung mga darating although syempre nakakatakot din yung dumating na rin yung last day di ba Ako aaminin ko syempre takot din ako dun sa ano dun sa last day na tinatawag o dun sa kamatayan takot din ako pero kailangan din natin ng paghandaan kasi dun din naman lahat tayo pupunta di ba Kasi gusto ko muna ano eh yung 
ma kumbaga sa ano maano ko muna lahat ng mga gusto kong mangyari sa buhay ko bago ako dumating doon sa point na ma wawala ka na ba dito sa mundo Hello po. Right. <laughs> okay na tayo. <laughs> May dagdag ka na. Tara na. Nais. Oo oh, nga, nais speechless ako daw mga pag-ano eh. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're, you're right. The, your reflection is good. Yeah, preparation talaga. And if, sorry, pagdating kasi ng mm-hmm. when, when the last is comes and then we will be judged but by words. So, anong, masa- anong sasabihin natin? Di ba? Anong sasabihin natin kay God? Anong sasabihin natin sa Misaya? Mm-mm. So, we should prepare ourselves. Yeah. Thank you so much, Teh. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Give a head. Thank you sa tour sa bahay mo. Yeah. <laughs> Puro sampay. <laughs> sampay. Sorry, sorry. Alright, thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, so who wants to volunteer? Yes, I think we're all set. Let's go, we're all set. Good evening, Heavenly Parents and Tropeans. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Good evening. Uh, ang, ang reflection ko naman ngayon, uh, since nasa last days na tayo, ako mismo, uh, nagsisik kung ano yung talagang uh, new truth ba. At tapos, dito ko lang siya nahanapan dito sa unification movement. Although, kinanganak ako na maraming religion na nalaman. Pero dito ko lang siya mas naintindihan kung ano yung purpose natin dito sa, sa mundo. At kung paano tayo mas maging... Uh, maging imahe ba ng Panginoon para magamit niya yung buhay natin although sa akin siguro kaya ako siguro nandito uh, as a part of uh, unification movement nakisa, nakasali rin ako sa matching and then uh, and eto nag-go on online seminar ng 21 days uh, hopefully siguro kung matapos ko itong 21 days mas marami pa akong malalaman at ma- may babahagi pa sa iba, lalong lalo sa mga anak ko. Yan lang. Thank you. Thank you very much, Te. So, Ate Corazon is always, always grateful. Eternally grateful na, Te. <laughs> Because of the truth na nalaman niya, Te. And, yes. And ang, ang, ang pinaka-essence din ng truth is, individual transformation which is matters with um, the last days that we are living right now yeah. individual transformation before we can transform the world into God's world and you know kung gusto mong magbago if we if we want to change ourselves it doesn't work like easily it take much it takes much much time effort struggles why because we have we have characters na uh, falling characters na kailangan natin i-remove sa sarili natin and it mahirap siya so yeah and but possible it's hard but possible so that's 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 the point all right who else um What's the volunteer? Come on, come on, come on. Yes, yes I want to see it. Let me see your hand, hand. Okay. <laughs> okay, you know that. Yeah, I can see the spirit as well. So let's welcome heaven. <laughs> Good evening, for brothers and sisters. Um, I think my reflection is about, like, I think in section two, it was uh, the, 
um, it was said that God will save the world, but in doing in doing so, as humans, we have our own responsibility to make sure we complete our own purpose, and that can be fulfilled with the three great blessings as well. Um, uh, making sure that we align ourselves with Him and uh, reaching individual perfection as well. Um, I think that was really good. So, thank you. Yes, thank you, Heaven. So, Heaven is talking about responsibility. God does the responsibility, right? Because He created us. Uh, God is eternal, and we are also eternal. And if we just live, we uh, will not die God. Then is not uh, uh, an absolute God. So his responsibility is to save us. But it doesn't, um, hindi lang sa responsibility ni God, hindi lang nakadepende sa responsibility ni God, but human beings have the responsibility, that's the biggest responsibility actually yung ito. Um, the history uh, is the work of God, but the failure is always for because of human beings. So, no question about God's responsibility. What matters now is the human portion of responsibility. Whatever the mistakes of the failure of the or the failure of the people, the previous central figures, we have to learn from it and, and uh, restore it and change it in accordance with God's will. Accordance with that's me. Thank you, Heaven. Two more. Okay. Tawa na lang. Tanananananay. Kala mo eh. Trapol. Okay, let's welcome Akinori. So... Uh, hello po. Rinig, rinig na po dito sa... So... Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, so good evening to all brothers and sisters, good evening to heaven parents. Uh, uh, reflection ko is uh, maybe sa thought process ko nung narinig ko yung last days, nung mga times na di ko pa alam masyado ang divine principle, nung mga maybe 12 years old or something. So after hearing the last days, parang inisip ko di ba like what, what is really ra- la- the last days? What does it mean? Nung unang inisip ko is like end of the world ba? Or something like may aliens ba na mag invade sa atin? Or something na mag end sa ano to, itong mundo nito? I want to see that. <laughs> yung pa yung mga iniisip ko po kung ano pa talaga yung last days. So after ano like reading the divine principle a lot of times, yung mga times na read 100 times the divine principle, each divine principle from ye- yellow book to black book. So yung ginawa namin. So after reading all all the time and going to uh, joining, participating in lectures, seminar lectures. Uh, I've learned that yung last days niyan pala is just, it's just a uh, coming to a new world, like building a kingdom of heaven on earth. So, yung ano, like after hearing those, it's like, oh, now talagang naiintindihan ko na. Kasi, why I was thinking like the vaccine born kami as second gens and I heard like we are important ganon. So why would God end the world sa ano sa state na ano nangyayari ngayon? Kasi second gens hindi na ako nagtaka ako bakit ako eh, ano yung reason ko what na napao dito di ba? Bakit may end yung world? So yung thought process ko and after hearing that I realized na si God talaga is really loved us na sobrang mahal na mahal tayo kasi why would he destroy his beloved creations? Uh, ano yung purpose niya? Bakit kinawa niya itong lahat? So, umpisa pa lang. So, it just made me realize na God really loved us and care about us. And it's really heartwarming to hear that si God lagi nandito lang kapag may problema tayo or anything, nandyan lang siya lagi sa atin. So, ayun, that's my reflection. Thank you, Aki. Yes. So, yun. Um, gusto ko yung sinabi mo na ano. What's the point if at the end the world will be destroyed <laughs> by leaving? Yeah. So, it, it's not the literal end of the world. 
but we cannot avoid the other interpretations of the Christians because they could see that there are some phenomena happening in our environment. But that is because there's a need also in our environment to change. It is necessary, that's what I have said. Yeah. But anyway, it will explain in the in the part of the divine principle. But the literal end of the world that the world will be destroyed is not the truth. It's just the the end of the world of Satan and the beginning of God's world. All right. Thank you, Aki. Now um the last not the least. Welcome, Nevian. Uh, good evening, brothers and sisters. Uh, oh, uh, my reflection for tonight uh, as part of our attitude uh, to the last days. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, as part of uh, the last days and our portion of responsibility, I think we should also do our part in spreading the new truth to other people, uh, especially to our uh, relatives and uh, the people around us, to our, our friends and families. Uh, so I, well, for me, I I don't, I wouldn't really feel happy if there's someone left behind. Um, so I think we should uh, act fast and um, well, educate them about the, tr the new truth. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Vian. So, Vian is a uh, mentor mentioning about the attitude. So we should not uh, um, like the map conventional belief natin before. We should put yeah, sabi nga sa Bible, we should put uh, the new wine the new wine skin. Kasi pag sa Loma, nasira yung wine. So, dahil ang bago din yung nalagyan. So, uh, yes, um, thank you very much for the reflection for everybody. And I'm, I'm, I, I really appreciate the reflection today because tonight because, yeah, volunteer. And lahat ng sinasabi niyo may laman. <laughs> so, it gives us uh, inspire, it gives us inspiration also and uh, motivation to our responsibility and to help you guys, brothers and sisters, towards um, this, um, towards uh, the goal of our true parents and the will of God. All right, so, tapos na tayo. Ay, tapos na pala tayo. Tapos na. All right, so, Ano, um, bago, picture mo na tayo pala. Take a photo. Please open your, open your mouth. <laughs> open your eyes. Ako yung madaldal dito eh. Lagi na ka, open your mouth. Si Kuya Aki. Alright. Teka lang po. Tari ko lang po mag-join sa cellphone. Uh, may, picture, may picture na rin po. Uh, teka lang. Uh, teka lang. Walang kami yung ano mo, computer? Wala po. Sa phone lang po kasi.
Ba't yun na ano? Okay. Alright. So, first heart. Small heart, small heart, small heart. One, two, sa sarang amida. Sarang amida. Dapat Korean yung pronunciation. Next. Vision 2027. Sungni, sungni, sungni. X. Uh, try niyo na ba yung Hibaragi? Eh? Ano ba yun? Hibaragi. Okay. Like this. Then smile. Then turn around. Na joke lang. Ganyan lang. <laughs> Three, two, one. Right. So... Any, ano? At wala na. Okay, tapusin na natin. Uh, let's, uh, yes, I hope um, marami tayong natutunan ngayong gabi sa chapter na to, chapter 3, the last days. Yes, and let us do our best for, yeah, let, let us uh, realize and reflect more kasi we are on the last days and as what I have said, uh, we are with true parents, so this is this is really serious. I, I'm, I'm I'm saying this uh, because our responsibility is very important. I don't know, but like this is the greatest greatest blessing sa sa lineage ko. Parang sa ganun. in my lineage, this is my our greatest blessing because we were we are we were chosen by God to be with the Messiah during the last days. So let's transform ourselves and let's transform also our brothers and sisters. Adieu. Well, let's end this with a prayer. And I would like to ask uh, Julius. Julius pray again. <laughs> okay, let's pray, brothers and sisters. Our loving Heavenly Parent and our victorious Tropens of Heaven, Earth, and Humankind, good evening. Today, again, we finish our fruitful lecture and sharing reflections with regards to our topic this evening. And more importantly, we understood the meaning of the last days. That it is because we have now the Messiah that that could be the, the turning point that could transform each one of us and ultimately the sovereignty of Satan into your sovereignty. Because only the Messiah that could remove our original sin and without removing our original sin, there's, there could be no transformation. There could be no... Um, changes and still the same, uh, we are uh, still fallen and only the Messiah that could restore us to that original sinless state. And that could be the starting point of establishing your substantial kingdom, kingdom of heaven here on earth. And we are so grateful for our true friends for really sharing his love and ideals to all of us. And in um, return, we have to really do our best to unite and having that absolute faith, absolute love and absolute obedience to their um, desires to reach out to everyone, that everyone could participate could do their responsibilities, be able to work hand in hand, that we could ultimately realize God's desire from the, the very beginning of seeing his ideals substantially 
realized through the fulfillment of the three great blessings. And now that we are here in this time of our true parents, that could that now we, we've seen the the foundations laid by our true parents. Now we've only inheriting and following, not so so much difficult, but still we have to exert our 100% effort that we could be successful, especially in our tribal mission. And we have to equip ourselves with your words and we are so grateful for this opportunity that we could really learn and deepen our understanding of your ideals and especially your, your heart, the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ the heart of our true parents to really liberate you, really bring joy to you through real, realizing the substantial kingdom of heaven. And we have to understand also that our life here on earth is our preparation to the next world. Because in your kingdom, kingdom in heaven, it is governed with your love because your, your, your personality is true love and we have, we have to attune ourselves while on, here on earth so we could be able to enter in that kingdom uh, for eternity, uh, one with you in that kingdom. And it's very important to, to really fulfill our part and practice that's why we are we are oriented to live a life of true love or a life of living for the sake of others especially we we can really grow ourselves if we really share these ideals to others that from there we could understand your heart more by uh, really dealing with different kinds of people shows how how really um, how really hard to give life or to bring people back to your ideals but now the time that was laid by our true parents now some are having some easy task for each one of us and we are so grateful for that and we have to really strive also that we could fulfill our part that could contribute for the substantial uh, realization of your kingdom. Again, we thank you for today, this evening, and for this another fruitful night for each one of us. And um, this continuously guide all of us that we could really deepen more and be able to share this um, ideals and principles with heart that we could move people um, and we could really raise them up and bring them to join us in building your kingdom. Thank you once again for everything, especially for um, these um, experiences that we have this evening. I'd like to offer this with gratefulness uh, in my name and my wife's name, Julius Santami Escletos and the Blessed Family. Aju. Aju. Yes, let's give hand to everybody. And good night, everybody. See you. Good night, week. Kuya. Thank you. Good yeah. night, Evan. Good night, Evan. Good night, good night Evan and Evian. Good day. I want to go to Australia. <laughs> I will go there. <laughs> Good night. Yeah, just Thank that you so much, Paul. Good, Good night. night. Ate Lina, everyone. Good night sa lahat. Good night. God Good night, bless. Everyone. God bless din po. Good night, Sir Herwin. Good night, Feli. Good night sa lahat. God bless. Bye-bye. All right.
Te, Terelina, sama ka bukas, di ba? Di, di kita marinig, te. Eh, <laughs> nakalimutan ito. Hey, hindi ka marinig te ganun ba? ganun ka marinig <laughs> makakala mo hindi na kita pinapansin <laughs> sana yan te sa laptop siguro Baka naka naka yung naka headset yung ano ba naka saksak headset. Nagalan mo yung headset? Wala ba? Ah, okay. Na, end ko na pala to.